Hi, it's Kim McGrath with Your New Moon in Cancer, part of the Aries Libra nodal shift and Venus retrograde video with cards and stars for all zodiac signs. I'm kind of on information overload. We have so much happening this week coming up. The third week of July that I've been kind of paralyzed with how much information I have been preparing and pouring out. I wrote an extensive Venus and retrograde blog and we have a nodal shift happening right after the new moon in Cancer. So I had to write all about that because the nodal shift, that lasts for 18 months. It's like, you know, a karmic lesson in our collective and for ourselves personally. And then the Venus retrograde, which the shadow began June 19th, and it doesn't end until October 7th. So it's such a long transit that it really needed its own blog. Plus, it only happens once every 18 months to two years. Um, so it's huge. Huge shifts are happening. I have a new deck that I am so thrilled to be using. It's the Tealy Fortune card deck by Ray Hepburn. It features 200 cards that are traditional tea leaf symbols. It came with this fantastic bag to hold all of the cards because that's a lot of cards. Uh, most decks only have, you know, maybe 40 or 50 cards. Traditional tarot deck has 78 cards. This is 200 cards. In addition to, there are the months of the year and astrological house theme cards. So not sure, I just opened it. You know, I love to open a new deck with all of you, but I really kind of needed to check this out first with how extensive it is. So we're gonna see how I'm gonna do with that. Um, my crystal, for the rest of July, it's going to be Moonstone. Go figure, Cancer is ruled by the moon. So I'm going with my traditional Moonstone and this bracelet that I have, it has every kind of Moonstone on it. So, you know, black Moonstone, peach Moonstone. Um, I can't think of all the moonstones, but you can see the different colors. I I wear this every single day and I wear it on my right side because that's what I'm putting out into the world. So it's, you know, that, that nurturing, nice, emotional, maybe empathetic side of me. And then, of course, like on this side, I have hematite, hematite, and then, of course, this beautiful uh, seraphonite and prenite, I believe, bracelet that Jen, my friend Jen Blake gave to me for my birthday. It was custom made by one of her friends. It's, I haven't taken it off since I got it, and I just love it. Um, but yeah, this is what I'm using more on that this week. The card of the week, I didn't really pick a card of the week, so I'm going to pull a theme card out of the tea leaf, but out of the moon manifestation deck, we're going to do new moon in cancer. I posted this with a little, little, uh, quote on threads. So yeah, Threads is new and I wound up joining it the day that it came out and decided that I would do something completely different that you will not see on Facebook or Instagram. 
So expressions of the universe on threads and you will get different content. Now, I don't think I posted anything today because I was trying to wrap up the Venus blog, the node blog, prepare for all of this. Um, but you will not find the content that I post on threads on Instagram or Facebook. And I'm trying to post unique content that I just really haven't posted before. And I'm, it's all original, my own content. So I'm, it's not like I'm sharing posts uh, like I do sometimes on Instagram, like share from other people. It's strictly my stuff, my opinions. I, I said that it's my evil twin because I feel like I can maybe be a little more opinionated. Um, I'm a Gemini. So whatever side you're going to get is what will be coming out on threads. Um, let's get started. Oh yeah, I wanted to pull, let's pull a card for the week out of this bag. I love, I have, I keep all of my cards in bags like these, but they're small. So this is just amazingly generous. Okay, let's see, let's see what I got. Oh. Kangaroo. And that is about nurturing because think about the kangaroo's pouch and the little baby, the little marsupial climbing up and climbing into the pouch. And this says unsettled times need to plan ahead. That is going to be our anchor card for the week. Um, and it really goes with the nodal shift and even this new moon in Cancer. So the new moon in Cancer, very much about, think of Cancer energy. It is water, it is a water sign. It's emotional. The crab likes to, you know, stay in its comfy little protective shell. Um, you don't want to piss off the crab because, you know, those claws, they will pinch. They will, they will get back at you. So, but only after pushed quite a bit. Um, the crab or cancer ruled by the moon is also indicative of the mother archetype, that nurturing archetype. Um, this is in, not a male female thing. It's just that the nurturing part. And so, you know, cancer, a lot of water signs tend to always give so much of themselves and never back to themselves. So I think a big part of this new moon, what we're bringing in is more nurturing for ourselves. And what's interesting, that's really kind of the theme of the nodal shift from, um, from Taurus and Scorpio into Aries and Libra, because with that axis, that polarity of Aries and Libra, people tend to give so much of themselves for the sake of keeping peace, for the sake of harmony, um, and then this is where I think Aries gets a bad rap. You know, like if, if an Aries North Node person or even Aries, they give so much of themselves for the sake of finding the perfect partner, for being in that committed relationship, for keeping the peace and keeping the harmony. They give so much of themselves away. Then Mars that rules Aries winds up becoming full of rage and lashes out. And that's why a lot of people, I think, misunderstand the Aries suns, risings and moons because they care so deeply about others. And then when it's not reciprocated, it's lashed out. And then Libra constantly trying to find the balance and harmony in their relationships. Um, and they too often give so much of themselves away as a means to try and find the balance. And then they're constantly off balance. So you can read about that in my blog. Um, 
was I going to say? You know, it's kind of, I was, I just got off track because like I have so much going on in my mind. Um, the best way to balance all of that energy is for everyone to be honest in their relationships. And that includes being with, you know, relationship to the self. Oh, I remember. So Aries is about the self being self-full and it's not selfish. A lot of people think Aries are selfish and that's because they can't find the right way to express themselves. So then they have to be aggressive and come off as being selfish in a sense because they're not getting what they want. So like, this is going to be our lesson for the next 18 months. And then, so you've got Aries, the self, and Libra, our relationships. That's the theme for the next 18 months. The mundane and global theme, it's war and peace. And what really makes me nervous, and you'll see in my blog historically, when we have the North Node in Aries and the South Node in Libra, we're very good at war. That's the North Node. We know how to do that. The South Node is where we failed or haven't done it well. And that's the peace and the harmony. Um, but historically, North Node in Aries, South Node in Libra is always a precursor to war around the world. And just with the other planetary aspects that we've been seeing over the past couple of years building, you see it everywhere. Like I really don't even watch the news and you see it. I see it just the, the aggro all over the place, just with the way people behave out in public, the way they drive. And I want to take a poll and I'm trying to figure out how to do it on the socials to take a poll. So you can maybe leave me a comment here on YouTube. Let me know where you're from. Are you noticing people are becoming more drivers are becoming more aggressive and doing like really crazy things? Like, I can't even tell you how many times, like the other night I'm driving on, you know, like a kind of a major secondary road, going at a pretty good clip, considering that there was a lot of traffic doing maybe like 35, 40 miles an hour. There's a car in front of me. I drive an SUV, so it's a little bit bigger. And then there is a tractor trailer in front of us. This dude behind me, I guess we weren't going fast enough for him, but we couldn't go any faster, comes into the left lane oncoming traffic and guns it to try and go around me, not realizing there's a car in front of me. And then the tractor trailer and he almost, he almost got killed. But like, I'm seeing like people coming to the left lane to like make a left before you, if you're not turning fast enough and just really crazy stuff. So let me know if you can tell me where you're from. Are people driving aggressively? Are you seeing people not acting with good manners out in public? That's what I want to know. Okay, um, I want to do the cards pretty fast. So I'm just gonna kind of blow through my slides. We're gonna get this done. I'm gonna rely on the blogs because I wrote a lot. I'll link it in this video. Um, I will be coming back in a couple of days with more on the nodes and more on the Venus retrograde. For now, I just kind of wanted to focus a little bit more on the stars and cards because I know you all love that and keep this video short and sweet, um, but I will be back. All right, let me, let me bring up my slides. And it's, this is a, you know, kind of, a very short presentation because I just think that I already have so much. Okay, 
So we have the new moon in Cancer, the Aries Libra nodal shift, Venus retrograde. This is your mid July highlights with your stars and cards. Um, we're saying goodbye to Cancer this coming week, and we're saying hello to Leo. Happy birthday, Leo. But I, when I woke up from my mat nap today, so I'm a Leo moon. And Leo is usually a time to like, you know, Leos have been waiting in the wings to get their party on. But I think it's going to be a laid back Leo season because of the astrology. So here are the July highlights. You know, if you go back to the video that I posted at the end of June for July, you'll see this. But here we are picking up mid-month. We have the new moon in Cancer at 24 degrees, 56 minutes, comes in at 2.32 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, followed by the North Node shifting into Aries, South Node into Libra, just about 4 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That will hold until January 11th of 2025. I use the True Node. Some people use a mean node, so the dates will be different, um, but I, I use the true node. And that's a whole nother like five hour discussion. So we're not going there. July 22nd uh, at 9.33 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Venus officially goes retrograde through September 3rd. Now, the pre-shadow has been going on since June 19th. It began at 12 degrees of Leo. Post-shadow ends October 7th at, back at 12 degrees Leo. But um, Venus will retrograde at 28 degrees of Leo and then slide back to 12. And then, you know, it's got to do, you'll read, the, read it in the blog, how it goes back and forth. And it would give you a good explanation of how all retrogrades work with the pre and post shadows. Then, barely 10 minutes later, the sun will move into Leo on July 22nd at 9.50 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Happy birthday, Leos. July 28th, Mercury will move into Virgo. And I love that because it'll be joining Mars. So with the volatile energy that I'm going to be seeing over the next week, um, maybe we, after July 28th, maybe there's like a, a little bit of a slowing down, a more groundedness with Mercury and Mars in the little virgin sign of Virgo, the earth sign. And then I just wanted to point out August 1st, full moon in Aquarius. And it will be the first of two full moons in August. And the second one coming at the end of the month in Pisces. So that's pretty exciting. All right, we have our new moon in Cancer um, slide chart. And I circled this up here. So looking from where I am, the sun and moon, those are the symbols, will be in the ninth house. This is about expanding our minds, expanding our education. This is also tapping into a higher mindset, a higher state of mind, um, changing of our beliefs possibly. Now, it's interesting because like the ninth house is so expansive and adventurous and freedom loving and here we have the new moon in cancer which is more like kind of introverted ninth house is very extroverted so i i just feel like emotionally it may not be like us actually wanting to get out and have an adventure but it's the adventure is within ourselves um with it being cancer and it's emotional it's about shifting the way we can possibly communicate 
with our emotions. Our perception is definitely ninth house, shifting our perception so that it, you know, shifts the way that we react and emote to different conditions. Um, the ninth house is also foreigners and overseas. So that kind of like, oh, uh, you know, made me think for a moment, you know, mm, there's a highlight there because cancer is a cardinal sign. So cardinal indicates something that's beginning and something that doesn't give up. And I pointed out the north node and south node. It's in its final, final zero, 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 zero degrees of Taurus and Scorpio and will be moving into 29 degrees. It moves like backwards, kind of, uh, moves clockwise. 29 degrees of Aries and 29 degrees of Libra. What kind of makes me a little nervous, so this is happening only, you know, an hour and a half after this new moon, and I didn't draw it in, but you can see the square line here, the red thick line uh, from the North Node and South Node straight to Pluto. So that makes me nervous a lot, especially, you know, with this configuration, uh, because when those nodes shift, it will also be squaring the new moon. Uh, the sun and the moon, that, that new moon configuration. The square is tension. I feel like this is a huge signature for war. I mean, we see it. We see the protests. We see the violence ever growing. You're going to read about this in my Aries Libra North Node blog because I do point out, you know, the signatures of war throughout history. The nodal shifts run in like 18, 19 year cycles. So you can go back 18, 19 years and keep going back um, and see, you know, what has happened in history, if you don't believe me. But you know, I always do this when we have these big configurations because history constantly repeats itself. And that's why I love astrology because it's like, you can't make that up. So anyway, uh, Scorpio is on the rise at the time of the new moon. So that is like our leading sign. But what is leading us is the south node. How do we get rid of the toxic relationship, the toxic values as a collective, as an individual person, and focus more on wholesome, true values that, you know, money can't buy, like kindness and sweetness and love. Um, so now with this nodal shift, it takes it to the next step. So I would recommend you also check out the blog that I wrote you know, a year and a half ago on the North Node, South Node in Taurus Scorpio, so that you could see what I'm talking about when it comes to values and money and material gain, um, toxic relationships and toxic values that we had to get rid of. That Scorpio is about eliminating, act, literally crapping out what is no longer needed, what is used, what is worn out, what is toxic. And Taurus is about, you know, material versus immaterial. It is love, it is money. And we're going to continue those themes with the Aries and Libra nodal access, but on a slightly different level. And then it comes down to like, how do I treat myself? How do I treat others? Um, and we can't expect others to be treating ourselves. One part of the problem of that axis is, you know, the Aries Libra axis thinks that everybody, we should all be treated fairly. And it's just not how things work. 
and then anger happens. Uh, wars happen because of it. Read all about it in my blog. Uh, moving on. This is just a little snippet of the nodal shift chart that I made up. So the nodes will move into Aries and Libra. And the planets that will have the tension, I mean, I'm sorry, the signs that will have the tension are also the cardinal signs of Capricorn and Cancer. Cardinal signs begin things. They carry them on. They don't give up. They are the igniters of the zodiac, so to speak. Um, so whatever is coming is something that is, it's initiating at this point. Um, I think we've seen the building of this for quite some time, but like this is the ignition, the starting point. The blue lines are harmonious lines. So from Libra, in harmony with the Libra South Node, will be Aquarius and Gemini. And in harmony with the Aries North Node will be Leo and Sagittarius. So those are the signs that will have the most effect during this time. And when I talk about tensions, Aries, Libra, Capricorn, and Cancer, it's not always bad. Squares and oppositions are not always bad. Um, because often if you have a lot of squares and oppositions in your chart, you're, you're either withering in a corner playing victim, or you are playing the victor and you're just a go-getter. You don't allow those challenges to stop you. You just keep trudging on. So, you know, most self-made millionaires, billionaires have a lot of squares and oppositions in their chart. It's what fuels them to keep them going. Um, this is my own little chart. You know, I was using the screenshot from astrology podcast, but I made my own, finally had the time. This is for the Venus retrograde. I'm coming back in a couple of days with a more extensive video on this, but you'll see the signs that are mostly impacted, which is pretty much everybody uh, with the exception of, uh, what is it, Capricorn and Pisces, I think. So anyway, more on that in a few days. And then... I wanted to just leave this here for a second. If you want to pause your screen, you could even screenshot this. The houses. So when I go back, well, oh, I don't have the houses there, but I have them here. You know, I'm always talking about like, what house are your planets in? So we're going to talk more about this in the Venus retrograde, because you're going to want to look and see like where certain things happen in your chart and then these are the themes of those houses i figured let me make up my own little diagram for this we'll talk more about that but you could even use that with where's this new moon showing up where's cancer in your personal chart so say for example i have cancer in my third house so this new moon would be affecting me in the house of siblings, cousins, aunts, uncles, neighbors, those in my immediate surrounding. Can we, oh shoot, I don't know what happened. Ah, um, sorry about that. Early learning, intelligence, expression, short trips, and technology. Those are just like some uh, general themes, but so I can expect something in, in that realm. As far as the Aries Libra, that's my sixth house and 12th house. So over the next 18 months, um, familiars, pets, coworkers, overall mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual health, day-to-day -day details, service to others. And then my 12th house, 
subconscious past life connections, self undoing, self sacrifice, fears, confinement, institution, jails, hospitals, dreaming, and spirituality. Um, and yeah, more on that in a second. So let's get into the stars and cards. So that Aries Libra thing, um, for me, so for us personally, we can look back 18, 19 years and see like, hey, what was happening in 2004 through 2006? For me, um, completely and totally fell in love, got, I moved, we moved to a new house in 2004. I met somebody, I fell in love. I was like madly in love. The person was a Libra, did not, I didn't realize he wasn't really reciprocating. Like I felt like he was, but then it just went, it was bad. So like that cycled out, but um, it's interesting because the cycle, you have to take a, also take a look at the half-life cycle. So if it's like an, you know, 18 year cycle, 19 year cycle, we could be looking at like eight, nine, 10 years. And that's about how long it took for that relationship to fully play out before I kind of had enough and walked away. But like, yeah. Um, and then prior to that, I had the same exact thing happening with my marriage. Like, you know, met my husband like a little bit before, but was totally in love. We got married. We had a, we were having a child and like, then that whole thing, the reciprocal part like fell apart. Um, so like, that's a cycle in my life and it would be like 12th house past lives. So definitely karmic connections. And then sixth house, you know, like my mental health was affected. My whole daily life was affected. So this cycle, I have to do it differently. I think I will, because over the last, you know, 20 years, I've grown exponentially, um, you know, in how much I love myself. And so like relationships don't affect me like that anymore. So maybe I'll meet somebody. And then with the Venus retrograde on top of all of that, a lot of times past loves come back. Um, so we'll have to see. I don't know. I don't know. So tempting. But, you know, it Venus rules Libra. It will be retrograding. So there is that love and money theme. Let's, I don't know, right? Okay. Um, I'm going to do stars and cards for all zodiac signs. And what I think I'm going to do is just pick like a couple cards for each sign. Um, I'm going to give you a theme card based off of, so there's six, there are six astrological house, astral house cards. How am I going to mix it up? And I'm just going to have to do this. Um, each sign, I will give one of these cards for a theme, followed by two cards pulled from the bag. How does that sound? This is for the new moon and a little bit for that, that nodal shift, right? Because they're happening at the same time. So you want to pay attention to your sun sign, your rising sign, your moon sign, and anywhere in your chart where you have a cluster of planets, which is called a stellium. Those are the key places. Well, I mean, also, to, yeah. I mean, you could also listen to where you have other planetary placements, like, you know, where I have Saturn by itself up in Pisces land in my 11th house. But that's so significant in my life. And then, you know, I have the Midheaven in Capricorn. There's no planets there, but it's a really significant point. 
So maybe I want to pay attention like to that, but really just listen to your sun sign, your moon sign, your rising sign, and maybe where you have a stellium. We're going to start with Aries as always. Okay, so Aries, your astral house is all about success. I like that. All right, and then your cards are pulling from the bag randomly. We have the gong and we have the horseshoe. So immediately I think of without even reading this, it's like wake up call, hear, hear the signs, get your wake up call. Horseshoe means luck is on the way, right? Okay. The gong says an exciting event is coming. And the horseshoe says, good luck. So with your success card, I love that. I love that for the Aries. And think about it because with the North Node moving into Aries, you're in the spotlight for the next 18 months. Um, there are a lot of karmic lessons there. And, but this is about you following your fate and your destiny and taking taking life by the horns, by the reins. Okay, so for Taurus, it is all about love. And I love that because I'm a Taurus rising. Okay, so for Taurus, all about love. Let me get your two cards. All right, so you have bouquet. That means somebody's getting married. And tulip. Oh, that's so, these are just like such forest cards, right? Um, the bouquet says compliments from an admirer. <gasps> Maybe I will be falling in love. I love it. I really would love to, right? Um, so, oh, secret admirer. And the tulip is great passion. Oh, I love that. I love it. I love it. Um, so yay, Taurus. <laughs> I hope I hope all the Tauruses out there are looking for love. But if not, this is definitely maybe an improvement in your relationships. Um, maybe with the bouquet, this is somebody is going to be appreciating you for all of your efforts and maybe for your kindness and your sweetness. Um, and the great passion to me, you know, like I'm trying to be serious for other Tauruses, but uh, the great passion means that maybe you find something that really sparks you and takes you in a new direction. And I like that. I love that for you. Okay, let's put them back in. Now, Gemini, little twins. I'm so excited after seeing those Taurus cards. Now, let's see. I'm a Gemini sun. Success. Okay, I love that. We got the, we have the success card for the Gemini. That means something fantastic is happening. First card. Second card. All right. Carrots. Okay. Nutritionist, nutrition, nutritionist. I wait. I can't even think. Nutritionist, nutrition. Oh, nutritious and delicious. My God, why couldn't I say that? And then the moon. Oh, so carrots. I don't know. I'm just thinking like earthy, being grounded making sure that you're eating well, eating healthy. That's kind of where I'm going with that. And that says opportunity or windfall. Ooh, that's fantastic. Especially with the success card, Gemini. Opportunity or windfall. Holy shit, am I going to win that big lottery that's been out there? Yes, 
come on guru Go jupiter is the guru in in eastern astrology and it's sitting on my ascendant yes um and then the moon for gemini sorry i'm like going off uh the moon makes me think of intuition um is the emotions deception be careful so if something seems too good to be true be very careful gemini's this says changes in your life so there's a new cycle coming in that's what that is yes new cycle coming in for the gemini's and it's full of success it's full of good stuff oh i love that okay so cancers cancers this is your new moon I'm gonna mix these astral house cards up and oh cancers marriage relationships um yes but this is like a commitment of some sort for the cancers and your two cards are the mountain that's obstacles right off the bat the rabbit good luck and abundance fertility oh so i'm wondering how many cancers suns risings moons or stelliums are maybe a little fertile um or looking to possibly get married start a family increase your family um there's definitely relationships uh, is highlighted so this rabbit says too much concern and sexual with sexual matters Ooh, getting it on like little bunnies right um too much concern with sexual matters all right cancers you don't have to tell me keep it to yourselves um but the mountain like i said i always think it's of obstacles when i see the mountain it says major change major challenges to overcome so yeah obstacles so i'm wondering if cancers are having issues maybe in their relationships um i will say with the venus retrograde that you know by october there's going to be a lot of breakups like somewhere but you know between now and october november or even by the end of the year there will be a lot of breakups um and it's being initiated by this new moon in cancer so okay leo will be your birthday soon leo happy birthday leo okay leo for you tis also about success love that for the leos I have so many leos in my life and i am a leo moon so yes <laughs> sorry leos it's all about them it's all about the me right i try not to be that way but i can't help myself all right so you have the bag oh what's in the bag and the wreath so the wreath would say on oh, this the wreath is kind of like mourning or celebration the bag it's like the money bag possibly so let's check this out something important such as a new job or a raise cha-ching i am going to hit that lottery and if i do you'll never see me again i'm kidding you won't even know that i hit it because i'd still be doing this because i love it so much and then the read says sorrow over a loss um so yeah so something great happening, sorrow over a loss. So I wonder if there's even an inheritance there, but it's with the success card. So let's, let me get serious about this. Yeah, that's usually what I was thinking when I see the wreath, but I feel like the wreath Christmas time, but it's also like, you know, what you put up at a, at a funeral service. 
And then this bag, something important is changing. New job, new raise, more money coming in. And it could be from an inheritance. Okay, sorry about that, Leos. But Leos are going through really tumultuous times. Um, and I'm hoping that in a way those cards are not, well, that wreath card isn't true because I have a lot of Leos in my family. I mean, including me with the Leo moon. So we'll see, we'll see. And then that kind of concerns me with where cancer falls in my chart with siblings, cousins, aunts, uncles. Um, I don't have any aunts and uncles left anymore, but yeah. Okay, Virgos, you know who you are. You're getting the love card. It's all about the love. But love is, you know, also about like what we love in our hearts, who we love, um, taking time out to like really enjoy the things that we love. All right. So have your two cards here, Virgo. Clouds. And the throne. Okay. So clouds that would say to me, you know, like things are really unclear. Not sure what's going on. So maybe some Virgos are having issues also with their relationships. Um, cloudy and sure. The throne says to me, this is about taking your power back. Um, if you're uncertain about a relationship or a situation, it's time for you to take your power back. Now what the cards actually say, this is the first time I'm reading them. Temporary problems with the clouds. And the throne says position of authority. So interesting. I feel like for the Virgos, um, this could be a run in with authority. So you got to be careful. This could be at work or out, you know, in the public. But this could also be like, oh, I'm not sure. Did I apply for this job? Am I going to get the job? Am I going to get the promotion and the raise? Um, just feel like this is like a little bit of a time of uncertainty for the Virgos. But then the throne says to me, everything works out fine. Libras little house card libra also about love which perfect for the nodal shift there's only six of these cards to choose from so it makes sense that we keep getting repeats all right so libra i have your cards oh interesting like you know i mix them up in the bag the throne position of authority and the rat so the, the rat automatically says to me gross but somebody is um somebody doesn't have your back somebody's stabbing you in the back somebody is talking behind your back this love card i think for some libras there could be somebody that's stepping out on you um you're in the position of authority to put up with it or to walk away. Um, this rat card says someone working against you and behind your back. Oh, I know my, you know, my signs and symbols in my totems, right? Uh, so yeah, uh, Libra, this is an 18 month trek for you to take back your authority and weed out who doesn't belong there. Scorpios, I know that a lot of relief is coming for the Scorpios now that the nodes are shifting. Um, this is also about success for the Scorpios. Finally, finally. Things are changing. Things are shifting, Scorpios. All right. Let's see. 
Scorpios, the fly, which to me automatically is about annoyance. And the teapot, calming, soothing, nurturing. Um, what am I picking up? So we have success. Fly in the ointment is what I'm hearing. And also for Scorpios, oh, this is going to be super important. You get more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. And I think that's really important for Scorpios because, you know, they, you can come off like, you know, not in the best way. Looking, sorry. Thought I saw something. Um, your intentions are so good, but maybe you're not projecting them in a certain way. And so get you get more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. And that is your key to success. And then the teapot, it may really makes me think about like, Mm, makes me think about growing up in our home because we always had like after the morning coffee, there was always a pot of tea available on the, on the kitchen table and it was changed out, you know, freshened up throughout the day. There was always a pot of tea served in the afternoon and at dinner time. Um, so it makes me think of home and nurturing and my grandmother. But what this says, the fly says, a period of ill health or depression. So yeah, like there's an annoyance, a disturbance, but I think really for Scorpios, you're coming out of this 18 month node, south node, and like once the weight has been lifted off of you, maybe you need a little bit of a recuperation period. The teapot and tea is medicine, right? It says deep, friendship with someone of the same sex so but I feel like the teapot is the medicine it's that camaraderie it's that nurturing it's soothing that's what I that's what I'm picking up for the Scorpios all right let's see um who's next Sagittarius Sagittarius all right, Sages. Oh, it's all about happiness. Okay, so we got a different card. I like that. Happiness. All right, Sag. Let me try and mix, it, mix this bag up. Just showing you that I am trying to keep it fresh. Dig through these 200 cards. All right, Sag, you have the axe. It's time for, to bury the axe for the sake of your happiness. And clouds, a time of uncertainty, a time of lack of clarity. So um, this says force forces working against you with the axe, but it makes me think of, are you your own worst enemy? There's a lack of clarity. There's a lack of uncertainty. Um, there's temporary delays. And this act says forces working against you. But my guides are saying this could be that you are your own worst enemy, Sage. So hopefully with the shift of the North Node into Aries, trining, whatever you have in Sagittarius, Hopefully that will be um, a little bit of a karmic blessing and a boost. And that begins on July 17th. Capricorns, my gosh, Caps, I know you've been going through it. I know. So let's see. Capricorns, love. But like I always say, it's not always about love. It's about the things that you love, the people you love, doing the things that you know, make your heart the happiest. In your cards, oh, the tulip, it's all about your passion, following your heart. And that's, you know, that's how that works. And the bouquet, oh, so you were also going to be appreciated 
oh, that's so weird because, I mean, I just totally mixed these cards up and then I pulled out the same things that I picked for Taurus. And so another earth sign. Very interesting, huh? Um, so this is maybe secret admirer, hot romantic fashion. Oh, maybe I'm meeting a Capricorn. Yeah, that's so weird. Um, and LOL, right? <laughs> But this is, you know, somebody giving you kudos, giving you, you know, something in return for something that you've done for them, that they admire you, they appreciate you. And this is about following your passion, following that flame in your heart. So I love that for the Cappies. All right, we're coming down to the end, Aquarius. Aquarius, you've been going through it too. Um, been a little rough. Aquarius, it's all about success. Cha-ching. And I know my favorite Aquarian just got a new job. So I'm really happy about that, which I saw in her chart. But yeah, my daughter should, um, should really listen to her mother more often because everything that is happening in her life right now I predicted in advance with astrology, and now she's finally starting to believe that, hmm, maybe I am on to something, right? What do you think of my background? Okay, so success for the Aquarians. It's the wreath. Now, this bothers me because, you know, that's death and sorrow and loss. That makes me a little nervous, you know, just coming off of talking about my daughter. And then the grapes, the grapes of wrath. Ah, uh, but the sweetness of life taking a moment makes me think of um you know what is that there's an aesop fable about the grapes and the sweetness and i can't think of what it is right now but yeah the wreath it is celebration but often it's because of a loss so let's not even go there we're not even going to do that and then the grapes say Time to go out and have some fun. Yes, it's time to get some delicious foods. <laughs> Grapes turn into wine, right? Um, I know a lot of Aquarians that would appreciate that. But yeah, this this just does, it does concern me. But success says everything will work out. So I'm pretty happy about that. Um Maybe things don't work out exactly the way you planned. Last but not least. <clears throat> Pisces. Oh, Pisces, you're the only one that got this. It's about wealth. So money is coming your way, Pisces. Cha-ching, cha-ching. And I can think of a Pisces in particular that will be so happy if that is, if that happens. But I know, I feel it. It's going to happen. I feel it. I feel it. All right, Pisces. Let's see. So we have the dragon and we have firecracker. Okay. So something explosive, something exciting and beautiful. And the dragon, dragon makes me think about good luck, but it depends on which end of the dragon are you feeding, right? It says, beware of self-delusion, self-destruction, okay? Um, so Pisces, you often have a tendency to really do that. And so self-delusion is like, don't think, Maybe that you are more or better than you are. Don't, you know, don't be delusional, but don't be self-destructive either. And then firecracker, kapow, it says excitement. So I, and I think of that there's going to be some celebrations for the Pisces ahead, but the dragon to me, because it's so powerful. It's like, Pisces, you're finally taking your power back. It's going to pay off for you big time. And then there's going to be a big celebration. And that's how I see that. So, kapow. All right. 
let's wrap this up. Um, I'll be back in a few days to talk more about the Venus retrograde, do a little tiny video for that. Maybe I'll pull some more cards. I don't know. Maybe I'll also incorporate something about the nodes in there. Um, I should publish the blogs. I think I'll publish the blogs as I'm publishing this. I will link everything up um, in this video and on the blog so that they all kind of go together. Yeah, I think I'm going to leave it at that. So happy new moon in Cancer. Um, happy birthday, Leos. Exciting nervous about the nodal shift and about the Venus retrograde. One thing I'll leave you with before I send you off on your way and before you get to see the Venus video is it's really going to be about us going in and internalizing what it is that we want in our hearts. So, you know, we have a couple months to think about that. What do we want in our relationships? How do we want them to go? What do we want for ourselves? It is about love, money, values. So we have several months of this retrograde to like really go in deep and it coincides with the nodal shifts of Aries, the self, Libra, the relationships, love and money, you know, because uh, Libra is ruled by Venus. So it's kind of huge. Anyway, have a great week. Um, I'll be back and I, I will see you soon. And be sure to check out my other videos and my other blogs. I've been trying to blog more again. Keep up with that. And see you in a few days or I'll see you next next month for the August highlights. Take care.